Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am the Kentucky Yankee. And I'm, I've been working on a video for you guys, but it's been taking me a lot longer than expected. And it's really been a big learning experience for me. Let me show you what I've been into. And before I forget, this is not manufacturer specific. I'm looking for input from all different makes and models of tractor. It doesn't matter what kind of make or model of tractor you have. I'm looking for input from you on your tractor, whether it's a compact, a subcompact, a great big 180 horsepower tractor. So there's stuff thrown everywhere. The shop is a complete and total mess. What I was wanting to do is replace these chains right here because they just swing so far back and forth, back and forth. I know I can adjust them. I know there's different things I can do, guys, but I want to just modernize this tractor a little bit with some sway arm stabilizer bars. And the first set I made, I linked them from here to here, you know, to the end of this bar right here. That was the first set I made, and it didn't work. What would happen is there's a radius. It'd go, it'd go up at a curve and come down at a curve, you know? And that's what I was trying to understand. I'm trying to understand. So I built a set of brackets for this tractor. Like I said, there's going to be a video on all that. But I just wanted to show you the different radiuses are even on new tractors. And I'm just trying to understand it all. So this is a little John Deere compact tractor I have, subcompact. The pin right here, there's a pivot point. Here is the arm, comes out. And then right here, that same pivot point has this chain, the stabilizer chain. But if I push this in like this so it's tight, maybe I should just demonstrate and you'll see what I'm saying. This is just an upright, you know, for demonstration purposes. Now this arm is right against this bar right here. Watch when I lift it. And I'm gonna pull it in because of the chain is on the outside so it's tight. I pull it tight, see how I'm pulling it? Raise it up, lower it down, raise it up, Lower it down. Look at the gap. Look at the gap from here to here. Watch. Look. See how the gap increases? The higher you go, it, it almost gets to my first knuckle right there. So when making this next video I was telling you about and making those stabilizer arm bars, I was trying to eliminate this as much as possible on my, you know, my international over here. And I think maybe it's because when the arms are out at an angle like this, that's what causes that arch. I'm not sure, but I think, I wonder if all tractors have a little bit of arch to them or not. So that was a subcompact. Let's try this bigger one. It's a little bigger, 45 horsepower, and let's see what it does. Maybe it's because, I don't know. I know that I checked my buddy's McCormick, and it had an arch also, so I'm not... I'm, I, they probably all do it to some extent. Let, anyways, let's see if I can get this thing started and we'll try this one. Ah! Rats! Battery's dead. Let me go get another tractor and we'll jump it and fire it up. Boys. So check it out I've come up with this cool experiment and this is a strap it's not touching the drawbar it's just barely it's laid on but I got the two arms squeezed together with a strap I uh, taped one side of this PVC pipe and then this other side I'm going to mark with a sharpie like so there's a mark there and here's a mark here this is at the very bottom position the arms are squeezed together as much as possible let's raise it up and see if these two lift arms move in or out closer or further away from each other I'm anxious to see what happens All 
All right, so with the lift arms into their innermost position, look at how much movement we've had right here. And that's about five eighths of an inch from bottom to top. So this arms, the two arms moved outward five eighths of an inch. Let's put it in the mid middle position and see what happens. Okay, we're more at a center position now. And here's our first mark. See where it was inner. And now I've marked it right there. Let me raise it up and I will show you guys the difference. If there is any in the middle position, I'm not sure. So in the middle position, I raised it up and here's the results, guys. And that right there is probably less than a quarter of an inch of movement. And the arms went in. And I think I said last time they went out from the middle. So now let me put these, position these arms, these two arms, as far, spread them as far as I can. And we'll try it that way. So we've stepped out again, furthest outwardly position. There's my marks. And uh, I will raise it up and we'll see the results. And here's the results right here, guys. And I can tell you just by looking, it's about five, five eighths of an inch. So when it's, when the, when the arms, when the two arms on this tractor, and I'm sure they're all different, but when the two arms on this tractor are near center, you know, near center position of the tractor, then you will get very little, uh, very little movement from the arms in or out. But when you take them off center, then you start to get movement. And it's 5 eighths of an inch on this tractor, which probably isn't bad at all. So how much movement does your tractor have? What size tractor is it? Is it a subcompact, a compact? Is it a great big 150 horsepower? How much movement is in your arms, guys? Let me know. And again, I've got a video coming up here in a couple days about the sway arm link bars that I made for this, for this international tractor. I'll get it all together for you, and we'll do the same test on that and see how close I got with it. And I look forward to doing that. I doubt I can get as close as John Deere did, 5 eighths of an inch, but we'll see what I can do. If you uh, are interested in seeing that video, subscribe to my channel. It'll be up just in a few days, guys. Thanks for watching.